Okay, on page two, we're going to start talking about composite shapes because our learning target today is I can find the area or the perimeter of a composite shape. Now, what composite shapes are, are unusual shapes that you couldn't really find on your reference sheet. They're the combination of many basic shapes. All right, write that down. So if you need to find, if you're asked to find the area, or if you're asked to find the perimeter of a composite shape, it might look like this. So let's say you got a shape that looked like this and I asked you to find the area. Now this shape wouldn't necessarily be on your reference sheet, but if you split the shape up into a triangle and a rectangle, you could find the area of both those basic shapes and combine them to find the area of the entire composite shape. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to split the composite shapes up into basic shapes and either find the area or the perimeter. So let's look at number seven. A playground in a local community consists of a rectangle and two semicircles as shown in the diagram below. Find the area of the playground. So the shape of this playground is not going to be on your reference sheet. It kind of looks like a beat speaker. So what we're going to do is we're going to split up the area of the composite shape into familiar shapes that we do know. So one of the shapes that I do know is this rectangle. So I'm going to find the area of this rectangle first. So for finding the area of the rectangle, I'm going to write area equals base times height. And then I'm going to plug in the base and the height. Area is 25 times 15. Go ahead, use your calculator to do 25 times 15. And you're going to find that the area for just the rectangle is 375 square yards. Okay, so so far that means that I've covered the area of this rectangle, but I haven't covered the area of the two semicircles. Now, instead of finding the area of one semicircle and finding the area of the second semicircle, what do two semicircles make? They make a full circle, right? So I'm going to find the area of these two basic shapes as if they were a full circle. So I'm gonna say this half circle and this half circle make a full circle, and to find the area of a circle, I do area equals pi r squared. Now r would be, if this was a circle, r would be halfway through the circle to the center point. So I have to look at this shape and notice that they give me that this dimension right here is 15. So that means that halfway up the radius would be 15 divided by 2. Go ahead, do 15 divided by 2. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So that means that the radius for the circle is going to be 7.5. And that's what I want to plug in for R. So I'm going to do that right now. Area equals pi times 7.5 squared. Now, since we're doing order of operations, I'm gonna do 7.5 squared first. So on your calculator, please type in 7.5 squared or 7.5 times 7.5. Remember when you square something, it's 7.5 times 7.5. It's not 7.5 times two. And I'm going to get 56.5. So what that means is that the area of that circle, the two yellow parts, is pi times 56.25. So do you see how this answer right here has a pi symbol? And this sample answer right here does not have a pi symbol? If I want to put my answer in terms of pi, I'm going to have to say that my answer is in terms of pi 
375 plus 50, oops, plus 50, 56.25 pi. I can't add 375 with 56.25 because one of these numbers has pi and the other one doesn't. So in terms of pi, that's your answer. Now, when they ask you to round it to the nearest tenth, you're going to plug this whole thing into your calculator. So let's see. I'm going to do the second part first. So I'm going to do 56.25 and I'm going to multiply it by pi. And then I'm going to multiply, I mean, and then I'm going to add that number to 375. So if you plug this whole thing into your calculator, if you do 375 plus 56.25 times pi, you're going to get 551.714586 dot dot dot. And then it asked me to round this to the nearest tenth. So here's the tenths place. So I'm going to cut it off right here. Looking over, I do not have to round that seven up. So my answer is going to be 551.7 square yards. All right, let's go ahead to the next one. Emily's garden is a rectangle joined with a semicircle as shown in the diagram below. Line segment AB is the diameter of semicircle P. Emily wants to put a fence around her garden. Find out how much fencing she will need. Now, in this case, we're talking about fencing. If we're talking about fencing, are we talking about the area of a shape or are we talking about the perimeter of a shape? We're talking about the perimeter of a shape. So that means that she's gonna need nine feet of fencing here six feet of fencing here, nine feet of fencing here. She's not putting a fence here, guys. So don't um, count that um, dotted line as fencing because that's just showing you the diameter of the semicircle P. So, so far we have nine plus six plus nine plus she's going to put a, uh, sorry, a fence around the semicircle right here. So I'm going to have to find the circumference of a semicircle, which is something we haven't done yet. But I do know that the circumference of a full circle is pi d. So at pi d, so if I were to find the circumference of a semicircle, I would have to do a half pi d because I only want half of the circumference of that circle because it's a semicircle. So let's try to figure out what this diameter is. Now, if I look down here, this dimension is six feet. So that means that this diameter is also six feet. So I'm going to plug that in. It's a half pi times six. Now guys, what's a half of six? A half of six is three. So that means that the perimeter or the circumference of this half circle is three pi. So I'm going to do nine plus six plus nine plus three pi. These numbers I can combine before I put them in my calculator, I can combine those because they are all constants. So I'm gonna do nine plus six plus nine and I'm gonna get 24 plus, 3 pi. And I cannot make this 27 pi because this 3 has a pi symbol and this 24 does not. So my answer in terms of pi is going to be 24 plus 3 pi. Now to get my answer rounded to the nearest tenth, I'm going to put that in my calculator. I'm going to do 3 times pi and then I'm going to add that to 24. Okay. And I got... 33.4247.79. Oh, 7779. Come on. 
dot, dot, dot. All right. So basically now I just need to round it and I'm done. This is the tenths place. So I'm going to cut it off right here. Looking over, I'm not going to have to round it up. I just keep it the same when I round. So it's going to be 33.4 feet.